Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking movies. We have with us the president of the Music City Film Critics Association, Sean Atkins. He's joining us via Zoom, and the Music City Film Critics Association has just released its uh, top movies of the year. We are looking, we just kind of let everyone know what the best picture was, according to the Music City Film Critics Association, The Power of the Dog. I want to put this list back up of all the nominees again. And you see, uh, I just talk about a couple more. Dune. Dune, it was a beautiful movie. Um, it's been done before, and it, and it wasn't done well. This was done much better. I'm fascinated by this movie for a lot of reasons. One is, it ends, and there's a clear understanding that there's going to be another movie. And so I'm, I'm never sure how that's going to work out. Are people going to be disappointed? But I think the movie was, it took us on enough of a ride. It was, it was certainly well done, and it's certainly getting a lot of love here. It got it from the Music City Film Critics Association. You think it could be nominated for Best Picture? What, what, talk a little bit more about Dune. I, I think Dune is... I wouldn't say it's a lock, but I think it's a near lock to get nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. I mean, when you see this film, it begins and it has the title Dune Part One. So we know this, even though there is an end and there is a credits, that the story will continue. I think the story about a young man who is trying to fulfill a prophecy and everything in these worlds with the sci-fi realm, and it all revolves around space ice and the way it is captured it is epic in scope and even though this was made available to see on hbo max the same day it was available in theaters people still went to the movie theaters and saw this film because they wanted to see it on the big screen i was one of those people i wanted to see this film in imax and i did and i'm glad i did because a story this epic in scope has to be seen on the biggest screen possible and so while it ends on a on a cliffhanger we we do have confirmation that part two is coming here in a couple of years the studio did confirm that shortly after the film was released so i think Dune sits in that same same area as other sci-fi films like star wars and avatar in recent years that it is one of those sci-fi films that we will remember for as long as we'll be here on earth <laughs> so it's that good i would say i mean i think it's that good of a film <laughs> i think it is i initially when i saw it the first time i thought it was good but then the second time i saw it it really stayed with me and i had much more appreciation for it it didn't make my top 10 but it's still a great film that i think anyone who loves sci-fi loves it as well all right, I'm going to move down some of the other categories, just so, again, to give people a sense of, of just some, some great movies to see. Best Director, you have Jane Campion, Power of the Dog. We've certainly talked about that. Um, and it is. It's a remarkable directing job. It's a, it's a remarkable film. The story, I respect it a great deal. Um, and that's, you're probably going to see this movie come Oscar time, no doubt about it. Let's move on to Best Actor. And, and tell us about... I guess who you all nominated, and and there, there's the winner, Nicolas Cage, for the movie Pig. And I saw this movie, and I loved this movie. And when I saw that you all picked Nicolas Cage, I was overjoyed by that. But tell us a little bit about this movie and 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 why Nicolas Cage won. What I've been telling people, and not just colleagues in our association, but people in general, is that of any category for film year 2021 best actor is the most difficult if i could i would have put 10 nominees here for best actor but um that is how good the category is and we normally have five nominees per category other than best picture but this film was so good we had two that tied for fifth place so we had six nominees for best actor and all those actors along with Nicolas Cage, including Andrew Garfield, Benedict Cumberbatch, Denzel Washington, Will Smith, Simon Rex, though not many people probably know who that is. And then you have Nicolas Cage who, in this film, it's, it's a different kind of film than what we're used to seeing from Nicolas Cage. It's a Neon Studios release. It's a, it's a simple revenge story. It's 90 minutes. It, it's not 
the kind of revenge film that I think some people were hoping it would be like John Wick. If you see John Wick starring Keanu Reeves and the revenge trail he goes on after his dog is killed. Um, and in this film, Nicolas Cage, who was a chef, has his pig taken from him. And he goes on this trail to find out, all right, took my pig. That was his best friend and pet. It's it's, it's such a an odd movie. And I remember I saw, it's one of the first movies I saw uh, going back into the theater. So it had just been released. Um, the pandemic, it wasn't ending. I mean, I feel like it never ends. But it was maybe over the summer, and I felt like it was safe to go into the theater. And so I went into the theater, and it was empty. The theater was pretty much empty. But it was the first movie I'd seen on a big screen in a long time. And the other thing I remember about this movie is because I hadn't been going to movies, I hadn't been seeing previews. I mean, I normally go to movies, and I see previews of what's coming out, and I have some idea of what movies are going to be about when they are released. So I knew that this starred Nicolas Cage. I knew it was called Pig, but I had never seen any sort of trailer for it, and I intentionally didn't read anything about it. And so I go into it wondering, is this really gonna be about a pig or is it something else? And, and the movie just, I loved it. It just caught me off guard. I loved it. I loved Nicolas Cage's performance. It's almost as if, it's almost as if he, some, he, he has some speeches in this movie that, that are just great. And it's almost as if he's speaking as Nicolas Cage, you know, kind of about regrets in life and that kind of thing, and maybe career choices. And I just found it very, um, just really well done. And it hit me at that moment. Uh, and I would have put it on, on my list as one of the top movies of the year. And for me, often it's just how I, the mood I'm in when I see a movie, but this movie hit me perfectly, you know? And so I, I'm glad y'all nominated or, or, or picked Pig as, as a winner. Um, I, I don't know that Nicolas Cage will be nominated for an Oscar. I mean, do you think that's that's going to happen or or not? I think the chances are 50-50 with Nicolas Cage. Um, I guess it just depends on the voters in the Academy. But I think the best actor category of any category this year for film, it's the most difficult. There are so many great choices out there and it's difficult to just pick one. I mean, Denzel Washington, I mean, the star power, Denzel Washington, Will Smith, Benedict Cumberbatch, that's three near locks, if not locks for um, getting a nomination. Um, and then you have other performances like Andrew Garfield and Tick, Tick, Boom. It's, it's gonna be interesting who the five actors are picked for best actor at the Oscars. I think Nicolas Cage's chances though are 50-50. It just depends on what other guilds associations do in terms of their nominees and voting to see if it's gonna help them there to the finish line to get that Oscar nomination. So we'll see, interesting. Nonetheless. It is interesting. Now the one I've heard that is maybe the front runner and maybe maybe you would say differently is will smith and he was in king richard and that's uh, about the williams sister, venus and serena williams he's the dad um and and does a great job that's a great movie uh, but I've, I, I've i think i've read somewhere that he's certainly a front runner um in that category uh, would you agree with that is will smith somebody that that is likely going to be nominated and might be considered a front runner I almost certainly think he's going to get nominated for Best Actor. He was the front runner for at least at the beginning of awards season. It was the talk of town, and by town I mean Hollywood. And once the screenings came out in the early fall for King Richard, everyone was talking about Will Smith's performance. But as time has gone on, he has lost a little bit of momentum, and this is because of other performances coming from other films that have really stood out. Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth. And I think his biggest competitor right now going into the Oscars, if they both get nominated, that is, is going to be Andrew Garfield and Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, this is a film that has gained a lot of stain since it was released on Netflix. It's um, it's probably the one musical, I think, that has the best chance of getting any 
Oscar wins. And performance from Andrew Garfield is arguably the best performance from any actor this year. He sings, dances, and he acts the heck out of all his scenes. It's an outstanding performance. So that's probably going to be Will Smith's biggest competition between or at the Oscars. So when you say it's the best musical, Tick, Tick, Boom, um, you're saying you think that might be better than West Side Story? Is that is that what you're saying? I think so, personally. I know a lot of people like West Side Story, the remake from Steven Spielberg. I was not a fan of that film. Personally, I I, I really like the classic. I, I, I just don't, I don't get the love and appreciation for West Side Story that much. When I go to the movies, I'm immersed in them, and it takes a lot for me to get bored or to start looking at my, my watch or my phone to see, okay, how much time is left. And West Side Story was one of those films where I looked at my watch quite a bit, wondering, okay, how far along are we? How much time is left? But I do think I am in the minority of that. But well, that's not good tick, at all. Tick boom. <laughs> the res- <laughs> right. It, it's not. But like I said, I am in the minority on West Side Story. I know a lot of people that really like this film, some even calling it the best film of the year. I'm not one of those people. But even though I don't like it, I respect the views of my colleagues and other people who have really enjoyed this film. And we just saw that it, it was selected, you all have a category, Best Music Film, and Tick, Tick, Boom was selected as uh, the Best Music Film by the film critics here in Nashville. Uh, Want to go to Best Actress. This is another loaded category, and um, the winner in this category was Jessica Chastain, right? That is correct. Jessica Chastain from the eyes of Tammy Faye from Searchlight. And why do you think she won? I think Jessica Chastain won in part, especially for our association, because this film uh, tackles more than we know the story of Tammy Faye. A lot of people do as far as what her and her husband did as uh, televangelists. But it's more than just that as you watch it and uncover the character of Tammy Faye herself and the dedication Jessica Chastain put into this role and researching it and wanting to do it. Um, she came to Nashville a couple of months ago and screened this film. Or She did a Q&A with our members and other people in Nashville talking about this film and uh, what drew her to the project and why she wanted to do it and what all she went through and our association responded and we're not the only association that responded to this performance in this film as a whole other critics groups have been choosing this film or nominating this film and also selecting it for best actress just and while she's not the front runner right now at the oscars she is definitely gaining momentum toward getting that golden statue and i think she's going to be in a good place to at least get nominated yeah, it's a great performance. I did see the movie. It's a fascinating movie. Um, certainly the couple, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, they're fascinating. And she does a great job. This is another category that's pretty loaded as far as competition. Um, you have Kristen Stewart uh, with Spencer. Um, Nicole Kidman is from Nashville, and I've seen her nominated in Being the Ricardos. Um, you all did not nominate her. It doesn't look like she got nominated by you guys. Was are you were you surprised by that, or what? What does it mean that she didn't get nominated? I think Nicole Kidman is likely to get nominated for an Oscar for the performance in Being the Ricardos, and I mean it's a great performance. But for the Best Actress category, while I can't give specific numbers as far as the tallying went, I will say that Nicole Kidman was very close to being on the nominee ballot. Um, she, uh, it, I mean, this category, along with Best Actor and a few other categories, there were a lot of close calls between the top five and then six, seven, eight, nine. It was all very, very close. But I do think Nicole Kidman is going to likely get nominated for an Oscar for this performance. And if she does, that's great. I think it's a great performance, and I think the film is pretty good. 
And we don't have the list. That we're showing the winner. That was Jessica Chastain. We don't have the list of all of the nominees. Um, I want to just pull out a couple more that you all did nominate. Olivia Coleman, The Lost Daughter. That's, that's a fascinating movie. And I, I saw that, and it, and it allows a conversation about um, motherhood that um, is not a conversation that, that many movies kind of spawn. And so I thought it was, I, I, was, I was really impressed with that movie. Um, and I forget, it's streaming, I, I, don't, I can't remember where, it's streaming somewhere, um, and so it's accessible for people to see. But talk a little bit about that movie and Olivia Coleman's uh, performance. So The Lost Daughter is currently available to stream on Netflix. It is, if I'm not mistaken, the, re the directorial debut of Maggie Gyllenhaal, who is the sister of Jake Gyllenhaal, who most people know Jake Gyllenhaal. Some people might know Maggie Gyllenhaal, but she doesn't have the fame like her brother Jake. But this film is a very complicated film in it. And it's one worth the discussion in, in some respects is a very, um, it, there are a lot of tough conversations that this film presents the audience. And it's those that I think families and mothers might look at and reflect and try to compare to not necessarily saying that it will be the exact same or the opposite end, but it certainly opens up the conversation for that in family in general. And Olivia Coleman is great in this film. I think the film is fairly good. It's it's not one of my favorites. Performance not one of my favorites in this category, but it's it's still a great performance and I'm very happy that this or will Olivia Coleman did get nominated for it. So all right, I think we have a uh, a call here. Let's go to Justin. Hello Justin uh, yes. Go right ahead, Justin. What's on your mind? Okay, I have a question, and this is concerning about the film uh, um, Last Night in Soho with with uh, um, Anya Taylor Joy and Thomason uh, McKenzie. Um, I would like to know if you all had nominated, if the Critics Association had nominated for nominated the film for either. Uh, best original screenplay or for uh, best best um, 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 actress award or or any other category. And I'll okay. hang up and I'll hang up and listen to your comment. Great. All right. Um, what is it? Last night in Soho. Yeah. What about that? So last night in Soho actually did get nominated for a category in one category, one best editing uh, from our association. And to me, that was one of our surprises from our winners that we announced. Uh, this is a very, um, it's a, I wouldn't say necessarily intense thriller, but it is a captivating thriller from one of the best working directors, uh, Edgar Wright. I wasn't too big on the film itself, but a lot of our members were very much into this film based on some of the ballots I received and looking at stuff. Even though it might not necessarily got a ton of nominations, it especially was recognized in the edit category. And I even checked yesterday and early this morning that the film's director, Edgar Wright, had tweeted out and congratulated the film editor for this for winning this award from us and the studio recognized that too and put up on their twitter page congratulations on winning best editing for this film that's great I liked the that's film. great i wasn't enamored by it but but yeah i mean getting recognition from edgar wright like i said one of the best working directors now this guy has made great films like big driver Shaun of the dead so to get recognition from him for our association it it was just wonderful. That is great. That shows, I mean, people are definitely paying attention to what you all are saying here. And so, all right, we're going to take a break uh, and we'll come back. And we're going to go through just the winners from a whole bunch of different categories. So we'll take a break. Be back right after this.